Hi everyone, welcome to week number four. This week what we are dealing with is going to be chapters three and chapter 56. Um, but 56 is only going to deal with pages um, 1326 through 1333. Chapter three is what I'm going to start with this week and we'll touch a little bit on chapter 56 in this video. So chapter three is dealing with issues of medical law and ethics. So medical law and ethics has four different classifications that it can be broken down into, or four different categories. And those categories are criminal, civil, international, and military. Now, because only two categories really deal with medical, which are the criminal and the civil, those are the two I'm going to focus on, and it's also the two that your book, book will focus on as well. So criminal law um, are laws that are made to protect individuals and the other and the public health as a whole um, from harmful acts of others. So criminal acts can fall into two categories. They can either be considered felonies or misdemeanors. Felonies um, are things that can carry a punishment of either imprisonment in a state or federal prison or something like a death sentence. So some examples of a felony could be things like murder, rape, robbery, or if you're in the medical world, practicing without a license. Misdemeanors, on the other hand, are less serious, um, and they carry a punishment of either fines or imprisonment in jail for up to a year. Some of those examples could be things like traffic violations, disturbing the peace, or theft. Now, when we talk about laws like this, a physician's license is something that can be taken away if they commit a crime. Some examples of crimes that they can commit that fall under criminal could be things such as um, sexual misdemeanors or misconduct, um, murder, or violating narcotic laws. Now, we as medical assistants do not have licenses, um, so that means that we work under a physician. Working under a physician means that we can't diagnose our patients so if you are trying to diagnose or treat a patient, you can also be fined um, and you can be prosecuted even though you don't have a license. So please make sure that you understand you cannot diagnose patients. Civil law are laws that concern the relationship between individuals or between individuals and the government. And, individu and those type of laws, civil laws, can be broken down into tort laws. They can be contract laws or administrative, so those have three types. Tort laws um, are things that cover acts that result in harm to another. So things in the medical world and in medical law, um, to meet this definition, you must be charged or you must cause damage or an injury to a patient, and it must be caused by the physician or an employee, like medical assistants. Um, charges can be called either intentional torts or unintentional torts. Now, intentional tort includes things such as assault, battery, false imprisonment, defamation of character, fraud, or invasion of privacy. So things that you do intentionally without patient consent. Unintentional torts could be labeled as negligence or neglect. And in order to prove that something was neglected or negligent, you need to have the four Ds present. And the four Ds are duty, dereliction of duty, direct cause, and damages. Okay. Contract tort laws are, or I'm sorry, contract laws under civil law um, include enforceable promises and agreements between two or more persons to do, to do or not to do a particular action. Um, a contract between these two parties must be composed, composed of four parts, and those four parts are an offer, an acceptance, a consideration, and a competence. All four of those need to be present in order to make the contract legal. And the last one, administrative law. This covers regulations that are set by governmental agencies. Most healthcare employees um, that are most healthcare employees are more frequently going to be part of either tort laws or contract laws. So they don't touch too much on administrative because it deals with a lot of governmental rates regulations, um, but it can fall, things that can fall under there are um, uh, violations against the um, brain fart, against HIPAA, because that's a governmental 
um, law, and it can also deal with things such as Medicaid and Mer Medicare fraud. The other part to chapter 50, or I'm sorry, to chapter 3 that I want to discuss is malpractice. And malpractice is an unreasonable lack of skill that results in an injury, a loss, or a damage to the patient. Malpractice claims are really classified according to three types. They're either a malfeasance, which means you're performing a wrongful act or unlawful act, misfeasance, which is performing a lawful act but not in the proper way, or nonfeasance, and that's pretty much being neglected or ignoring to perform a necessary lawful act. So that's the big stuff for Chapter 3 I'm going to talk about. Chapter 56 is really going to help you with dealing with your discussion post for this week because your discussion posts talk about handling things with, or handling patients with special needs. So chapter 56 is dealing with patient education um, and also dealing with special needs. So patient education must be adapted to fit not only the learning style of your patient, but also any special needs that they might have. So what I mean by special needs are things like um, Teaching children, that can be a special need because children are much different than adults and regular patients. Um, patients who are hearing disabled, physically disabled, mentally disabled, patients who are um, visually impaired. Older patients are generally falling into this category as well because they are a little bit harder to teach things to, along with patients who maybe don't speak English or that's not their first language. They can't read or write because those patients aren't going to tell you that they can't read and write. You have to just look for those signs and symptoms of it. So let's talk about a couple of these. So teaching children, um, it's important that you remember that children are not small adults. They don't understand the adult language that we normally use. We have to kind of use um, kid gloves, for lack of a better saying. You have to use kid language. Things that might help you with kids and children are using coloring books, using stickers, um, letting them play with your, your stethoscope or the blood pressure cuff, letting them, them touch those things and kind of play with it and hear heartbeats. It's fun for them, and if you've got the time, let them play with it because that makes them more comfortable with coming to the doctor. When you're dealing with hearing impaired patients, a lot of the time they will be able to read lips. Um, so we generally try to speak a little bit slower, but don't talk so slow that you start um, being you know, disrespectful to the patient. You have to keep in mind that you don't want to insult them, but just slow down your pace a little bit um, and don't try to talk to them in a very loud manner um, unless they say they can't really hear you. Then raise your voice a little bit, but don't yell at the patient. If you've got patients who are visually impaired or they're blind, um, it may be something that you need to do where you um, record instructions so they can play it back and hear it for themselves. Some patients will be able to do this on their devices, such as you know, your cell phone or your tablet, but sometimes that might be something that is offered at your facility, so please be aware of that. And another thing that I want to talk about is people with developmental delays. This is a lot of what I used to see. Um, I had patients who would come from nursing homes or they would come from like a Walter Lawson. They don't necessarily know how to communicate with you, um, so their caregivers are really who you're going to talk to. But remember that your patient is still that person that's sitting either in the wheelchair or they, they don't have the developmental skills that you do. Um, just because their caregiver is the one you're going to tell instructions to, still look and talk to your patient because that's going to mean a lot to them. All right, so that's where I'm going to stop with my video. Please make sure that you guys are reading your chapters fully, all the parts of it. Um, because that's going to help you better understand this week's module along with doing your assignment. This week is the first week that you'll have a quiz. Um, it is an online quiz, but I want you to wait to do it until after you come to class. The reason is, is that I'm going to do a quiz review with you guys. I'm going to help you try to get a better understanding of what's going to be on the quiz so that way you don't go in blindly trying to figure everything out. Okay? Also, you have your discussion post for this week. Again, that's going to relate with Chapter 56, so please make sure you at least read that section um, for your discussion post this week. Please make sure your discussion post is posted by Tuesday at midnight with your two responses on Saturday. 
In ANGEL, you will see a lab activity in your week four module. Please do not do anything with that yet. Just come to class. We're going to do some of it in class, and some of it will be your responsibility to do outside of class. So please just come to class, and we'll talk about that then. Um, and you don't need to print anything. I will have all of that printed for you. The last thing I want to talk to you about this week is your written assignment. So your written assignment is really broken down into two parts. But that being said, it still should be written as one fluid paper. It should flow very nicely from part one to part two. Okay? Part one is you are going to create an office policy. Um, and there are four parts to that office policy that need to be in that policy. So please make sure that you're pulling up your written assignment and you're taking a look at what's required. If you don't understand what an office policy is or you're having a really hard time getting it started, there are tons of examples online that you can research um, to have a better understanding of how to start that. Part two is now you are going to train a new medical assistant on the policy that you wrote. Okay? What you're going to do is you're going to essentially summarize how you would explain the policy that you created to that new medical assistant. Part two should really only be about one page in length. But there are four questions, again, that you need to access and answer within part two. So make sure, again, that you pull up that document and take a look at it, okay? This assignment is worth 45 points, so it's a little bit more than anything you've had so far. Um, but once you pull up that document and you see all the questions, you can also see what I'm going to be grading you on so you have a better idea of what's to come. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.